Welcome everyone to Spirit Addicts Media. Hope y'all are having a good Monday. Um, the, I guess the biggest question that everybody's going to have, um, there's only been a couple of practices. I think James has got to see one practice in pro day. Uh, I don't know if you got to see the second practice or not, James. Um, yeah, I got to see. It was the, that's, um, the first padded practice. I didn't see the first padded practice. No. Gotcha. You actually saw the second practice of the season. Mm -hmm. I got you. That's my bad. Um, but the title of the show and the thumbnail pretty much tells you what we're going to be talking about in majority. There will be other subjects come up. But uh, the biggest question I think um, a lot of Florida State fans are going to have um, and a lot of people are going to try to answer. And it's hard to answer before we see us play a game. It's also hard to answer – when you, you don't exactly know what you're going to be and for how long you're going to be it because injuries happen, um, people get better, and some people, they get in a lull, and then they don't play as well as they did maybe two games ago. But all in all, will Florida State be a better uh, team than they were last year? I think that you go room by room is how you answer that question, uh, more so than you just say uh, as an overall team are we better which that would answer your question after you go through each room. And I'm going to start with the bad rooms first, the ones I think that may not be better. Um, and that would be number one on my list is the defensive tackle room. It's not that we're not good on the top end, but do we have the depth? But also, will we be adding any depth pieces and the portal come very soon? Uh, James, I've asked multiple coaches this question and also other admins on the outside if they were worried about the scholarship count because we're currently over. Do you think we lose more than six or seven guys in the portal so that we can get more pieces, or do you think we only lose what's necessary and this is what we're going to stick with? Um, Personally, I'm going to – like, again, I think if there's somebody that just truly makes sense, that just stands out, like um, I, I think if a deep tackle that's like – that has a few years of eligibility somehow – that we had a rapport with that hits the transfer portal. I think we will go out for that. But I think for the most part, they know that they're going to probably lose five or six um, to the transfer portal. And that's just necessary anyway. And I think they're going to find, look for the right fits um, there. I don't really think that they're as shocked, alarmed, or scared about what they have. Um, I think they have a contingency plan. And this is, again, I always tell people mine, just using common sense, um, just where we have a lot of depth at is defensive ends and safeties. And with that, you can kind of work around your inefficiencies in the D tackle room and the linebacker room. Um, and I don't even necessarily, again, we're good across the board. We just It's just hard to go into a season with only five to six D tackles. You need to have eight. Um, and not because of games. Like if we're on our third string D tackle in the game, we're really in a bad spot, and we're going to have to make some some adjustments to be able to protect that. But for practices, you still need to have depth and um and things of that nature. But when I look at you know Joshua Farmer's not practicing right now, so some um not complications, but like it's nothing crazy. It's just the man had hand surgery, so he's still like there was a screw or something that may have gotten aggravated, so they had to fix that, but. When I look at what Daryl Jackson, Samson, Lions, um, I can't, excuse me, Colorado State kid, his name escapes me right now. Um, Kelly. Yeah, what those guys are doing. And then when I look at the the fact that we have um, two different types of hybrid defensive ends, I, that's what I would call it, where you have Lolo and Duraje, both are pretty good. What's crazy about Lolo is he's damn near symmetric. Like, he just looks short because of how thick he is. Mm -hmm. Like, but then when you go up on him, you're like, oh man, he's he's really six four. Um, and then you know, you got those, but then you look at Marvin Jones Jr., who's been able to play the stand up outside defensive end, as well as um, you know, looking at um, Patrick Payton. Um, those are guys that can can do what you need them to do. Um, on top of Byron Turner being 250, um, a couple other guys being 250, so they could play a five, a four I five technique. Um, things of that nature. So you could go give a three down. You can have a three down that gives you a four down um, vibe. Um, that's why I say that I don't think we're just going to go searching for somebody. It has to be um, the right fit. Plus, um, you know, 
And you may even be able to convince some of these guys to come in just with the um, NIL deal. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, I looked at, like, just even amongst the offensive line, I think the offensive line has six seniors um, in that room right now, Um, or at least five, um, if not six. Um, Same thing with um, your wide receiver, your wide receiver room. Right now it's got four seniors um, at wide receiver. We talked so much about the younger guys that have been brought in. We forget that you've got Deuce, um, Darren Williamson, um, Portier, as well as um, I'm going to remember his name one day and stop calling. It's Scott Douglas. It's Scott Douglas. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, I don't. I know Jakai's not. Jakai's a staple. Jakai's not going anywhere. I think Portier is going to be pretty good. But you know, conversations are going to have to be had with Deuce and and Williamson. And I think I would love for all of them to stay. But I can also see how you know they won't. But we'll have a. You know, FSU fans are going to have spaces and a lot of other different things. Even though we'll be really good with what returns for 2025, we'll have a lot of open scholarships for going into the 2025 season to be able to sign a good high school class as well as a good transfer portal class. And the second room that I'll move on to, so now we just finished up with the defensive tackle room, and I'm doing this in the order of which ones I think need help the most. Um, and that doesn't mean that we're in dire need. It just – if I was to add someone somewhere, it would have to be this particular room. So we started off with the defensive tackle room. Uh, the second room I'm going to move to is on the same side of the ball, and that's the linebacker room. Uh, while I like Cryer, I think that Omar has picked it up. I also think Nicholson is doing a much better than what he was able to do last year. I love that we got Sean Murphy over here. That's a huge get for us. That's why I'm not. That's why it's not the number one on the list because there is some depth there more so than the defensive tackle room in my eyes. Um, now the top of the defensive tackle room is great, but it's it's going to fall off after the, the top three or four guys. Uh, but the linebacker room, uh, you've got DJ Lundy that came back who was going to transfer to Colorado. And James seen, um, seemed to be extremely impressed with DJ Lundy at practice. So I'm going to let James talk about the room and what he saw, and then I'll throw my two cents in at the end of that. Yeah, um, I mean, just the, the the body type, and just also one of his weaknesses, and what I've always, what I've stressed, and you know, hopefully when I go there and I continue to see improvement on there, I've discussed that I didn't like him. And he's a liability in coverage, and one of the things that I noticed, obviously, in shorts, you're not hitting. Um, one of the things that you can notice is coverage, and I, I noticed he made he broke on the ball pretty well. He was doing some really really good things, and I was just like, wow, that's impressive to see. Each year, somebody progress and take another step on top of the changes that he's made in his body. Um, it definitely wasn't for a short stint of um, hanging out, um, you know, going skiing or whatever in Colorado or whatever the hell he did for the couple of weeks before he decided to pull his name out of the portal. But I like um, what he's doing. Shout out to Josh Storms. Um, again, Storm Sports Performance is, um, is is what I'm what I'm promoting right now. Like, you know, if you, Josh, just let me know, man. I can move back to Tallahassee, baby. We, we, we can get a little facility that you oversee the workouts. But, man, what you've been doing with these guys' bodies is incredible. Um, Sean Murphy, it definitely, I could definitely see a world where Sean Murphy and DJ Lundy are your two uh, main contributing guys with Omar um, Graham coming in, as well as Blake Nicholson. So when I think about this, and, and again, D tackle. What is Odell doing? Is he falling asleep, eating his jello pudding, watching Murder, She Wrote with recruiting? But then I look at the quality of the depth and what we have coming in, and I'm like, damn, if we could have kept Io, that's the crazy part. And I really wish, you know, I really wish Io didn't early. I'm sorry to go back to D-tackles, but I just thought about something. I really wish Io didn't early enroll because I think the maturity that would have come with him being, you know, a little older, coming over here and then kind of sitting that first year, sitting last season and then seeing where he would be at this year, he would be a key contributor this year. Like he would definitely. And then what you would see is him moving into what farmer where farmer's going. And uh, the, I, he went to Georgia tech, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So like, it's, you know, we're we going to have to see him. Hopefully he still has the jumpsies on the fall start, like on the, um, on the encroachments, but we'll see. But going back to the linebacker room, I say the same. I say that because people say the same thing about Randy Shannon. What is he doing in recruiting? What is he doing in recruiting? We ain't brought nobody in here. Oh, we missed this five star. We missed this four star. Well, last time I checked, 
Sean Murphy's a four star. Blake Nicholson's a four star. I believe Omar was a three star. DJ was a three star, but DJ is a guy with a true draft grade right now. So, like, if he were, if we're projecting what he would be in the 2025 draft, I'd probably say, I'd probably suggest he may have a higher grade right now than nephew. Um, and that's because he's a little taller, a little bigger, more looks more of like what your traditional linebacker would be. Um, and that's just, and then the other guys are starting to fill these roles and fill out, and they get an opportunity to be, um, to be um develop not everybody's going to be an nfl player on your roster some guy you, you, you need special teams guys you need depth guys and these guys that you know that they brought in you know they saw something they're recruiting body types they're recruiting guys that they feel could function in the role in which they want them to be and i'll say that's the most impressive thing i saw at practice i saw 85 guys that look like they belonged All right, whereas i can't say every year I've seen guys top in the top, top the, the the top to the bottom that at least look the part. You know, even Georgia, Georgia ain't got 85 cats. Nobody has, I think I said that on your show last year. Nobody has 85 cats. But what you want to do is have your top, your your top 50, your top 60 be better than everybody else's. And when people say, look at what happened when we played Georgia, we didn't go in with our top 50 or top 60. We went in. With 12 guys, probably more actually, no, there's more than 12 guys because that's not including Dent. Um, 17. and you yeah, 17 guys opted out. Yep. Yeah, so if you do what's you know, forgive my math, I didn't go, it's not what I went to college for, but I believe 60 minus 17 is 43, correct? Yep. So like we we have 43 cats. Their their top 60 was better than our than our top 43. And that's just kind of the, the nature of it. But I think we'll continue to pers- pr- continue to produce, continue to get better. And um, that linebacker room, again, give me – if we could get the kid from Charlotte, um, the linebacker, if we get maybe one or two other guys, I'll be okay with that. But right now we have um, a pretty solid um, pretty solid um, front seven. Yeah, I definitely agree. And the only thing that I got to say about the tight end, I mean, the, listen to me, about the linebackers is I really like where the young guys are starting to advance to. I'm, I'm really impressed with the advancement. Well, we're going to move on to the next room, which is um, on the opposite side of the ball. And remember how I'm doing this. It is, I think, this is the room that needs more depth. Defensive tackle was the first one that I what I would say needs the most depth. Um, linebacker was the next one. And this one was kind of a back and forth with the linebacker room because I would even say this one might be more depleted, but you don't usually lose a lot of tight ends throughout the year. It just doesn't usually happen. Uh, Their injury is prolonged for some reason. Um, But the tight end position is the next one. Um, I like that we've got more a lot. I love that we're bringing in Landon Thomas. Um, Beyond that, it gets a little bit scaresome. Other than I want to see what Jarrell Powers from the 2022 class if he's made any steps uh, to be any better, because he might be, and I'm, I'm not calling nobody out, but he may be a young man that's talked to uh, come the spring. Um, as far as we already in spring, but after spring practices are over and we have a spring game, he may be one that's told to look elsewhere uh, because he's not going to fit. I hope that's not the case because I'm a huge fan of Jarrell Powers. Loved what he did in high school. But beyond Morlock and Landon Thomas, and I know I'm forgetting somebody. Uh, Jackson West is a good one. Um, but we're missing, and James talks about this all the time, we're missing that biscuit. Definitely missing that. That's a, that's a, <laughs> you can call that an episode. You can name an episode after that, man. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I think Powers, I, I, you know, I got to see the rest of it. But if you ask me, based upon what I saw in that first practice, um, that I, the practice that I watched and some of the other stuff, the questions, if we were going to have a block and tight end, Powers would be the closest thing that we have to it. Um, Landon Thomas, whew, that yeah, yeah, that, that I could I. What was it? What did they drop him down to? Like the fourth, um, tight end in the nation. Yeah, I got to see the other three. Like I don't like. I, I mean, maybe they're bigger. And like they can come in right away and, and give them something right away. But Landon Thomas, the way he runs his routes, um, the way he is, like it wasn't even the, like it's not like they're like you know I'm seeing the the, the second coming of collegiate Shannon Sharp or um, or Tony Gonzalez. I'm talking about how explosive he was out of his start, like um, out of his stance. 
that was like, I'm like, yo, that's impressive. That's a weapon in the passing game. He getting, he gains 30 pounds. We're in a different world um, with what we're, with what we're looking for. Um, Murlock is still going to always be intriguing. Well, Murlock for me has to become, and, and to his defense, it's difficult when Katz is out there. There's no threat of the running of the run game right? mm-hmm. because we're in shorts. There's no real, um, you know, the defense is able to play, play the pass. But a six seven guy, um, we've got to be able to dump that off and and know where money. That's got to be the layup. Like that's got to be the chain mover. We tried to take a shot deep. They took it away from us. They took away our, our um our um deep middle throw. They took away our intermediate. They took away our um check down to the running back. Boom, tight end. Got to be. We got to be able to have that catch to be able to move the chains. Um, because you know there are going to be things that I believe will happen having a Malik Benson, having a Jalen Brown, having some of these other guys that can truly run and just want to go get the ball deep. Um that are going to open up the game for the tight end position. But I think what fans are looking at, and don't get me wrong, this is no knock on Jaheim Bell. I think Jaheim Bell that just got caught. Like we were beat, we were winning very well. Um, and we just, you know, didn't utilize it like the way we could have used it. But I don't think we had as much production from that tight end room in, in, in coming years. If we're able to get three to 500 yards out of that seg, I think we've been fine. But um, I also don't look at, I don't see us blocking, having them be the blockers in which we need outside of, again, a Jackson West, who if we needed somebody who was like a great – this is no disrespect. It's just Jackson West isn't Jaheim Bell. But if we need a great value version of him, I think he could be the guy that could be what the NFL calls your age back or your move tight end. Like he's the guy that you could put at the wing when we want to run that counter action where we have the guard and the center pull, but we have the backside tight end pull as well. Jackson West could be that guy that could be able to do that. And, um, you know, that's my opinion of it. But I would like to see if we can – and I know George is tired of us trying to flip their guys, but if we can go get that young man from Camden County, mm-hmm. um, that's another um, – that's like replacing your Kyle Murlock. Um, he's a long kid. I've seen him. I'll get a chance to see him again this summer. Um, that means Tremel will get a chance to recruit him a little bit. Uh, but he run. They run this this um this screen with him, and it was it was very difficult for us to be able to for us to be able to block. Um, um last last um when we did our when we did the team camp, but I think um you know right now our tight end room is. It's it was a B plus last year, B minus maybe. I think we're at a if we're a C, that's me giving it a high grade, and it's just because um, I don't expect much out of it. Yeah, um, like I said, I was really in between the two rooms as far as the tight end room and the linebacker room. I think the linebacker room might have more depth than the tight end room, but like I said, I think linebackers are more prone to injury than tight ends. So that's the reason why those two are flip-flopped on which one's which. Um, Now moving uh, to the next room, I would say, um, and I know some people are going to agree and probably think this room should have been higher, Um, but which room I'm going to now is the offensive line room. And here's the main reason why I'm going there. I love the stars that are returning. We've got the Maurice Smith. We've got uh, Daryl Jackson returning. You've got uh, buyers returning. You, you've got a lot of good pieces returning. But you've got Robert Scott returning. He cannot stay healthy. It, everybody is calling the kid out, but the kid's been here since it was bad, since it was really bad. And we run the ball about 33% more efficiently when he's healthy. Mm-hmm. He's a, a much better run blocker than, than people give him credit for and how much the team really – benefits with he's in there and he's healthy. Um, but when you see, you know, Julian Armello is going to be getting tried out at guard a lot in the spring. I think that's perfect. I think moving him over to guard makes perfect sense. Um, but a lot of your 2022 guys that, you know, that's where Atkins really did a lot of work in the recruiting high school rankings. Um, we, we've lost the majority of those guys. Uh, they've, they've moved on. They've hit the transfer portal. Um, it's not, you know, Quayshon Sapp being one of them. Um, there's a couple more, and their names are escaping my head. But 
I'm worried about depth after the starters. Uh, Estes is still there. That might be a young man that gets talked to. Um, there's there's just a couple of guys there that don't really benefit Florida State in depth. Uh, they haven't shown to anyway. So the offensive line, while I think great with starters, we just don't have the depth that I think we should at this point. Um, so I think that's why Florida State has to recruit better in the offensive line room in the 2025 class. And I'm very excited for the, the guys that they brought on campus that have set up official visits and all that. But the question is, is tight end room, defensive tackle room, and offensive line room, are we going to be looking in the portal for those guys because we don't have any room as we speak? Like, we are over the 85 scholarships right now. So how many guys does Florida State get rid of based off of the necessities of pieces they need to bring in? Uh, so, James, when you look at the offensive line, what are your thoughts as far as that room goes? Um, I think, again, it's a lot more seniors than what I expected. Um, you know, you got Darius Washington, who's going to obviously be your left tackle. Um, Byers will go over there be your right. Um, Rob Scott could probably be that guy who could swing. Um, I think if Mo Smith can actually stay healthy, man, we're good. But um, if not, then look for Richie Leonard um, to probably go fill that fill that void at center. With um, with which is why I'm shocked Sap you know didn't work out. But um, you know, you've got early Armella um, and Simmons that are still there in the fold. And and to be honest with you, we got to get to a situation where you know I know Coach Atkins likes to rotate and use a lot of guys. But where we get Armella and Lucas, um, and even early, uh, getting some getting active early, um, you know, at least in quality twos. But when I was talking to guys like Big Fo, um, um, and um, what's my guy's name? Um, he's a thrower. I was just talking. He was on the live yesterday. Um, um, oh, DeHaven. Um, uh, he was a both offensive linemen on our '99 national championship teams. Um, how there's talent. There's better talent there than we even. Um, that we even um, are aware of and because they were older. So we just got to get these guys older. We got to get them healthy and find a way to continue to engage um, these um, younger players. But I'm with you on that, Chris. And I know um, you and uh, you and a couple guys on the timeline have uh, had, you know, a lot of different jokes and stuff going on back and forth. And I know you got your, your active bet, um, but I, I do know this. So uh, we've got some guys actively in Georgia trying to make that want to be a part of it. They actually like Atkins and, you know, what we really have to show. And this is why I never paid attention to it until the guy said it in Indianapolis that they, they fully expect to have 12 or more next year, but you need, um, Washington, Byers, Jones, or, you know, but hopefully a healthy Rob Scott or some guys like that. You need those guys going to the NFL combine, showing out, and we need those guys to um, also get drafted because mm-hmm. now you're showing that you can put butts in the NFL, and that's really what the end-all, be-all is. Um, you know, this year, you know, this year we sh- will show that consistently we're putting defensive ends and D, D- linemen in the NFL. In, uh, in the, in the NFL, as well as our first linebacker in quite some time, and numerous guys and two guys in the secondary. Next year, you guys, we gotta hear um, hear these other things. But uh, we, where we can't be at is, you know, we can't be relying on true freshman um, three stars. Um, that's going to step up. That's going to probably set us back. Which is why I think Maurice Smith has had a lot of injury issues outside of them not being able to solve that um, problem that he had keeping on weight until the nutritionist finally got involved. But you need to have guys get like, it's not the video game. It is hard to go out there and, um, and play guys as a guy who played as a true freshman, uh, undersized true freshman. Um, it is difficult to go out there and, and play with five, with, with, with a lot of young guys on your offense a lot. Like you're not going to, you're not going to win a lot of games on this level. So what we need to do is make sure those guys are getting developed. And I like the fact that we have a mostly veteran offensive line backed up by some guys who could get quality reps, especially if we go out there and and we start um, being more dominant against our opponents. 
Definitely agree. I think I think that Florida State has done exactly what they said they were going to do as far as recruiting the offensive line and the linebacker room. I knew we were going to start hot with the linebackers, which we have, um, as far as getting them on campus, getting recruits and et cetera. So I'm happy with that. Um, but at the same time, now it's time, you know, come April, June, and July, that's when Florida State really turns up recruiting. And I think that they're going to do really good in the offensive line room uh, based off of what people they're getting on campus. So this is where we get to the nitty-gritty because it's really hard for me to start picking – apart rooms so i'm going to give you the reason why i'm picking this room what is that we went through defensive tackles linebackers tight ends offensive linemen in the fifth room that i would say i'm most worried about um which isn't a lot um is the wide receiver room a lot of people are going to say how in the hell are we worried about the wide receiver room while we have a lot of talent while we have a lot of size we have a lot of speed we are definitely lacking experience just being honest, if there was one thing I could pick out of the wide receiver room that I would say we're missing a little bit of, it would be wide receivers from the talent level. So I got nothing against Ja'Kai Douglas, but he's a good slot guy. Might be even a better halfback than he is a wide receiver. Um, and then you go to poor tier. His injuries have been an issue, especially last year. I think we should have seen him more, but he was injured, so we didn't get to. Uh, while you're bringing Hakeem Williams back, when Drevious Jacobs back, they played a little bit last year. You just brought in Malik Benson. You've got some wide receivers that are going to be good. You got Gibson coming in the class. You've got uh, Camden Fryer coming in the class. Uh, to say the most surprising, which he's not really surprising because of how good he was in high school, but he's translated over to college so far extremely fast, is Lewayne McCoy. Wheezy is doing a phenomenal job. And I'm, I'm impressed with what he is and who he is. But all of these guys that I'm naming don't have – where they have the talent, they're lacking the experience. Where they've got the experience, they're lacking size or injuries as, as a fold, or they just don't have the talent of the guys that are less experienced than them. So we're lacking a little bit of experience in the wide receiver room. But, James, you got to see how they reacted and practice and all that. What are you thinking about the wide receiver room? Um, just I think it's like what you said. We we it, it kind of showed in the um in <laughs> in the bowl game, like one of the very talented, um, terrible situation to put them in. Like like imagine your first real game experience is against one of the better defenses in the nation. Um, even though you practice against it, but like you like to see it against Georgia, you're expected to make some big catches and you have the opportunities, um, but you have an inexperienced quarterback and your inexperienced wide receivers. In a game like that, that's that's very difficult to um, be able to overcome. Um, but um, obviously, you know what Jakai is able to do. Um, he is a game changer. He just needs somebody. He's not your he's not your number one guy. Um, what we need to see is can Portier be that guy, mm -hmm. or is it going to are they going to just defer to Malik Benson? And I think Malik Benson is again a guy who um, creates excitement. But even what I've heard him say, and I'm just telling you what I saw. Um, the length, the size, and the speed of our secondary is very hard to um, replicate by anybody else in the nation. So, like, one of my jokes was is that when they see another defense, they're going to praise God because, like, they've had to go up against – perfect example, when they play Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech is a zone-based defense. We run heavy man, a lot of hand checking, a lot of the different things like that. Um, our guys, if you haven't paid attention – can really, really run. Um, uh, we're so fast in the secondary that it's made me temper my expectations and actually change my thoughts about guys that I actually really care about in recruiting because I know what they can do and I know what we're expecting. So it's kind of like, but when I look at Georgia Tech, they run zone. Um, kid like um, Amari Hart, no, it's not a, uh, yeah, Amari Harvey um, from Tallahassee from my high school. Um, he's a four five, he's a four five guy on a great day. Four six, maybe good corner, very instinctual. Played safety in high school, um, like Malik Benson, four four sub four four. I'm gonna take I'm I'm gonna take my chances with that every day and twice on Sunday. So um, you got that. We we see what Keem can do at times, but now can Keem become that guy? Can Destin Hill, um, you know, get better in year two? You know, because again, a lot of people had heavy expectations for a guy who hadn't played football in like three years. 
Yeah. Uh, so, you know, but he did really good. I mean, he's excited. He's explosive. Um, you've got, and then, like you said, Lil Wayne is doing good. He's doing what I, um, what, what we saw. Um, man, what's the young man's name? Um, Keem, like one of the, I can't think, of, he's a redshirt freshman this year, wide receiver as well. Name escapes me, but um, he has, but he actually regressed. The Wayne is actually doing very, very good right now. Um, and it's, it's like you got four seniors and then you got a bunch of people who ain't did nothing. It's like in nothing in between. <laughs> and that's what gives you, that's what, what scares you. And with, a, again, with an, an inexperience in, uh, in uh, with it, yeah, Vatrevius, thank you. All no nonsense. Uh, with the inexperienced quarterback for your system, it's just a lot for you to not, it's a lot, but that doesn't give you any reason to not be excited. It's just, I can't say with definitive that what it is, but what I can say is, I felt like this in 2022, yeah, and in 20, but you could see the flashes. I can see what Johnny Wilson could be in 2022. I can see what Jakai could be. Um, I can see what um, the kid that left us to go to Utah. Um, wide receiver dad played running back in the league for years. Um, you know, you talking about Micah or the, oh damn, it was Micah though, right? What his brother? Um, his brother plays in the league too, right? Yeah, his brother in the league right now. Pitt was it Pittman? Yeah, Pittman. Yeah, yeah. Like you could like again, Pittman was good outside of you know tearing his tearing his hip labrum, which I don't think a lot of people understand how painful that is to actually have to gr- grit through. But you got again, you've got some things that you could just if you want to play like fantasy lineup, like you can write a a a, 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 Malik, a Malik Benson, Destin Hill, Hakeem Williams. Um, lineup and be like, hmm, I can see, I can see the intrigue with that. Um, coming back with the Portier, um, uh, Brown and um, and um, Jakai Douglas. You know, you can come and see, like, because again, Jakai Douglas is your explosive take the top off guy, but he's five nine, five ten. Like, he's not the he's 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 not the same as Malik Benson, who's you know maybe six one six two, big catch radius. Um, you can throw the ball. You can hang that ball out a little bit more. He can go reach out and get it. It's just a lot of different things. But one of the biggest things that we have to realize is they got to stay healthy. Um, you can't make the club in the tub. Or as my, as my coach used to joke, the best ability is availability. So we have to make sure we're um, with that um, in the receiver room. Well, we uh, Kevin, we talked about Morlock in the tight end room. Are we not putting him in the wide receiver room because that's not where he's at? Um, so we already talked about the tight end room. We talked about the defensive tackle room first being, in my opinion, the most worried room. Um, not that I'm worried much about any of them, but if I have to pick them out, which ones I'm looking at the least amount of depth. Defensive tackle, linebacker, tight end room, offensive line room. Then we get to the nitty-gritty with the wide receiver room because I don't have much to say bad about it. And then um, the next room that I'm going to pull up might make some people feel – a little bit odd, but the quarterback room. That would be the next room that I would say, okay, yes, uh, we've got Brock Glenn that's coming back. We've got Luke Cromenhawk that's coming for his true freshman year. We've got a walk on in Jackson that was another four-star quarterback that came in. Um, and, of course, the transfer portal guy in DJU. Like I said, I'm getting to the nitty-gritty, so I'm having to critique things that isn't a big concern. In, in my eyes. Um, but at the same time, I'm going to nitpick and critique because we, if we start seeing this this year, people are like, damn, nobody told me that he had this problem or nobody said that this was possible or what have it. So what I will say, um, you know, with the starting off with the starting quarterback, I think DJU is going to win a lot of football games this year, first and foremost. But will we see some ugly play from him? Will we see some – uh, turnovers that aren't necessarily that make sense, eh, probably. But Mike's going to do a better job than I think either one of his head coaches uh, was able to do with him. That's why I think this will be his best year in college. Uh, but at the same time, habits are habits. And that's what Mike's trying to break. Tony Tokars is trying to break. He holds on to the ball at times way too long. 
He doesn't escape the pocket. He's either – if it's a design run play, he'll run. If it is a pass play, he will stay in that pocket as long as he possibly can and try to make a play. Uh, he's not a big scrambler at the same time. I wish he would get a little bit more scramble ability when he just knows it's not there, take off, um, just get some type of positive yards out of it, uh, which I think we may see him do so. Uh, but he also can get confused. Defenses throw him off at times. The great part of this is he is coming back to the ACC and has played the majority of these teams that he's about to play, and a lot of them are in similarities to what he's already seen. Uh, but at the same time, we're asking him to come in. This is what's negatives. This is what's against him. He has some bad habits that need to be broke. This is his first year in this offense. This is his first year at Florida State. This is the first year that I think I think he had plenty of expectations at Clemson. But he got a break going to Oregon State. He got to be that guy. And the expectations weren't as high as what they were at Clemson and definitely not as high as what they're going to be here at Florida State. So we will see what DJU is. We saw Brock Glenn. The majority of our fan base was not happy with what Brock Glenn was able to do, not realizing that he didn't get a whole lot of first-team snaps, not realizing that up to the bowl game he didn't even know he was playing. Um, and Brock's a great kid, and I think he's going to be a really good quarterback at some point. But if something was to happen with DJU where he's just not playing well or he gets an injury or whatever have it, that's our next man up. So that's the reason why I would put the court. I think we're fine at quarterback. But if these things are to take place, here's your question marks that start popping up. James, what are your thoughts on the quarterback room and maybe some critiques if possible? Great. I'll start off with that. Um, it, it's the most competitive quarterback room we've had in Mike Norvell era. I would go as far as to say it's the most competitive quarterback room we've had since – Fifteen, sixteen, um, because sixteen is when we lost um, um, DeAndre um, Johnson, correct? Francois. No, like we had Francois had to come in and play. As Francois was the guy um, mm -hmm. that year, because um, because Jimbo left after seventeen. Yes, yeah, so sixteen mm -hmm. would have been the last year that we we had, and it wasn't as competitive because obviously a redshirt freshman had to come in and play. So 15 would have been the year when we brought in Buddy from um, um from Notre Dame. Um, we had Sean yeah. McGuire um, and, J and, and JJ. I would say that this room was probably better than that room. Yeah. Um. So I say those things to say that DJU, when you look at him, he's a physically impressive person. And you can see where the tools are at. He can make the throws. The ball doesn't right now – isn't exploding off of his hand. And I think the reason why the ball isn't exploding off of his hand is because he's processing a lot right now. DJU will be the guy more than likely. But I think what people got to realize is, as, as I joked when I saw it, I tweeted out, I was like, Brock ain't no bitch. Like, Brock is going out there competing. Brock was the quarterback at Pro Day. And even then, like Brock, I got Brock, Brock, Brock got to throw that ball a little bit different. But we're gonna get better at that. Again, he's still he's a kid that's still getting reps, which is why I think DJU is gonna win in the long run, just because he's seen more. It's a very fast game, and 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 people who say DJU sucks or the trolls and the different things like this, I'm gonna tell you this straight up: you give me three to one touchdown to interception ratio, we're gonna win a lot of ball games, mm -hmm. and that's what he does. He doesn't turn. He doesn't fumble the ball. Um, he runs pretty good um, when he needs to. He's a very strong runner. Um, I, I'm not saying he's Tebow, but I'm saying a lot of those things that happen with Tim Tebow, like when you drop back, everybody's in coverage, linebackers, in, and, it, and there's nobody open, 250 coming at you, even if the 250 runs a 4-9. Uh, that's a lot of man to hit. So um, I think DJU would be the guy, but I think Brock is um, coming along. Um, I liked what I saw with Luke, um, Chroma Hawk. Um, I heard he did a really good first day, his second day. And if you want to hear uh, what the thought process was like, we have a really good video with me and him just being transparent on the Den Media Group YouTube channel. And you can hear what it was like. And we just talked a little. We just talked. Um, the game is fast. He's never seen these things before. But he performed really, really well in the scrimmage. 
Um, and in the scrimmage, he went up against the, the the younger guys and not the older guys. So he was able to compete with those guys um, that are on the same level as him. But uh, uh, Jackson is a guy. What I saw, like the ball comes off, the ball explodes off. He don't. He ain't got no problem making a decision now. Um, he'll throw it, um, and he's athletic, and he's got a little bop to him. Um, he's a guy that you bring in, and I hate to be the stereotypical guy with the black quarterback, but hell, if it don't work out with him throwing it, I, I would love to see him run a curl, dig, or a slant. Um, I think he's going to be very good at that. He's a guy who I believe is is just the get added depth to the um to the room, and I think in you know in a couple years, if you know, let's say you have Brock, Luke. Um, we're bringing in Tramel. Uh, obviously, you'll keep bringing in top guys. And, you know, maybe Tramel's not ready or Tramel decides that, hey, man, this didn't work out for me the way I wanted to. Luke is right there. Um, you got – and then, you know, Luke comes in, balls out. He leaves early or whatever. And now you got Jackson. He could be – I could see him at, at minimum being a stopgap guy to get us to a quarterback in which we really, really want. So um, it's, again, like – while again, it's kind of like the wide receiver room. It's like we have a senior, we have youth, and right now it's like it's a lot of excitement, but it's a lot of like, all right, we still got to let these pieces come together. And I think what sucks is not sucks, but like I want to give a more glowing report, but I but I like winning thirteen games, and I feel like this team can win thirteen games, but I feel more like twenty twenty two, and the um. The problem is the how drastic I was able to describe the jump in 2022 was because of how bad we were in 2021 and 2020. So you got three, six, um, five, and seven, and then you five and seven year. That's when my son uttered those words like, "Dad, is this a high school team or is this a college practice?" And then you come and you see it in 2022, and you see us having um, 50, 50, 50, 55 guys that can compete. Then you go back, then you, then you go to 2023 and you see us having maybe, uh, you know, 60 to 65 guys that can compete. And now you're looking like, okay, well, there's 70 guys that can compete, but the but it's not as drastic as it was in 2022. It's still a lot of question marks. I'm sorry, I my dreads and I don't have them. They're not as full as they used to be, but I'm not X. From, or, or those guys with Miami that's just going to lie to you and tell you that, you know, every throw was amazing and, and we're already there. And this is going to be the greatest FSU team. It's still a team that I have high expectations for, but it's the team that we're on. We're on pro, we're, tomorrow will be practice for. Yeah. So like, we're, we're taking it day by day. Yeah, I think what I want people to understand out of this is, is we're only critiquing what can be critiqued. I'm not – I'm not worried about this team not winning 10 games in a, in a big manner. And that's a lot to do with our schedule and definitely with our talent that's going to be on the field. And I think talent versus talent, and I'll put our coaching up against any coaching. That's just being honest. So I think that we win a lot of games, and I'm not knocking these guys, but we're not being true to ourselves if we don't critique what is seen or what we're worried about in some manner. Um, I mean, it's kind of boring if you don't critique what may or may not be um, of a team coming up in the season. Uh, I love our quarterback room. I think this is the best quarterback room we've had. But there again, you've got one guy that's experienced, and then it falls off tremendously. Brock with a couple of games of experience. Um, and then you've got Luke Cromanhawk coming in with no experience in college. Um, it It's a very talented room. But if something's to happen to DJU, it, I think the, the expectations drop off. They would have to because Brock had an elite defense to carry him when needed. I'm not saying we're not going to have an elite defense, but I can tell you that we knew our defense was elite by game one and two and three, and we knew we were going to be really good on the defensive side of the ball. And we very much could be uh, this year. It's just there's a lot of pieces that are different. There's pieces we brought in. So we'll see, but the – One thing I'll say real quick, Chris, I, I was just looking at the schedule, is we do benefit from having four, not necessarily layup games, but f in, in a bye week, but four games in a um, – yeah, four, four games in a bye week that are within – we have more talent than those guys. Yeah. 
We are we have more talent than Georgia Tech. We have more talent than Boston College. We have more talent than the Bay. We have more talent than Memphis. We have more talent than um um SMU. Yeah. Even though SMU, I think, will be SMU will have some cats. Um they will have some guys that they got to trash. Basically, we're playing UM from um the last time from the first time we beat UM. Um, because they got a lot of those transfers um, that came in. Um, so by the time we get, we should be, we should know a lot more about where our team is by the time we play Clemson at home, which is week five. Then, which again, we'll be able to make a, uh, we'll see what Clemson has. It will be able to make a more um, intelligent idea of what we should be. Cause I think there's only two to three. It's really, it's again, it's a two game schedule. Um, and luckily the two games aren't in this, in the month of September, like they were last year. So we get a little bit more, Hype. We could beat a Clemson, um, and people would be more excited about us beating Clemson. And then we'll turn around and beat Notre Dame. If I remember correctly, that's in November. So hopefully Notre Dame wouldn't have made their – do what they do when they lose three games. By that time, maybe we'll be lost three. But that win should still bolster us and um, and give us more hype. But in, even then, between that, we have Duke, which we should beat Duke. We have more talent than Duke. And going into Miami. So we have – um you know, a, a, a seven game stretch where there's one and a half teams that we'll compete against and we'll know what Miami is by then. So like uh, Miami has an easy schedule, but they start off with Florida. They start off with some guys um, that have traditionally given them hard times as well. So, you know, it's like, if we were starting off with a huge game, like if this was 20, like, you know, what's going to suck 2025, like, and even then, I still think we have a, a manageable schedule. But starting off with Alabama is not optimal when, you, when you're bringing in a, a brand-new quarterback. So, luckily, we're starting off with Georgia Tech in Ireland. Um, and that means we get to practice a little earlier because our season starts earlier. So, there are some things that I think we can – um, you know, I, I think we'll be fine. It's just, um, you know, again, a lot of question marks. Yeah. Um, and these last two rooms were really – Really hard for me to choose which one was less worrisome than the other. Not which one was more worrisome, but which one was less worrisome. Um, and some people may or may not agree with the order of it, uh, but I'm gonna have to I'm have to put it out there. the The next room, which is next to last, is the running back room, which therefore means I'm only putting one room over them, and it was really hard to do so. But that's the DB room. Sorry, I'm seeing a lot of our DBs. I'm not saying I don't see a lot of the running backs because our running back room is very talented. But we'll go with the running back room, and then we'll talk about the DB room right after. You obviously have Lawrence Toa Philly coming back, who basically, um, with some help, but basically won you the ACC championship game with Wildcat. Let's just throw it out there. Um, he's coming back under um, you know, a coaching staff that he's been with. He's coming as to be that guy. You know, he gets to take over for the Benson. He gets to be your first choice, so to speak, unless someone like a Roy Dale Williams comes in and does even more than what you expected or if Keziah Holmes hits another level that we didn't know if he was going to. Um, if Sam Singleton starts getting more burned because he's just that fast. Um, or you got a, a true freshman that's coming in, and I'm not trying to miss nobody, but Cam Davis just is not a freshman as much as he is that age. The young man is beyond what people would have expected. So it's extremely hard for me to pick the DB room over this, but you'll find out why in just a couple of moments. But we're going to talk about the running back room and what we expect out of it. I don't put the special teams in this because you got people from everywhere coming in. Plus you've got kicking is the majority of special teams. And as long as Fitz continues to kick the ball out the back of the end zone on kickoffs, we don't have much to worry about. Um, but looking at, it's not including Makai. Yeah, Danzy. Can't even here yet? He's still running, running track. Yep. But what do you think about the running back room as a whole? I mean, I know that Roy Dell's extremely exciting, especially for you because you thought he wasn't. You thought he was a Trayshawn Ward because of the top end speed, bigger. Mm -hmm. But that's what he was. What was it about Roy Dell? And then you can go back to Lawrence Toa Philly as far as what he is, but. What did Roy Dell show you that you didn't expect? I didn't expect a burst. Um, and, you know, I saw a burst. And, you know, I know with Trayshawn, Trayshawn had an elite vision. And I, when I, the few clips that I saw of Roy Dell, 
um, where of him having great patience and great vision, but um, not really hitting, up, being, not being a home run threat, and which is okay. Um, NFL, uh, a big play is marked off by 20 yards. So, um, and plus the NFL game, you don't score as much as you score in the college game. Um, that's why you can have three, if you're averaging four yards a carry, that's great in the NFL, not as great in college or high. As I joke with my high school kids, I'm like, you want to average nine to 10 yards a carry because they feel that worse. If you get up to college, that's going to go at half. When college, you want to average nine to 10 yards a carry because they figure at worst, or excuse me, I'll say seven to eight yards a carry because they figure at worst that translates to four in the NFL where things are condensed and a little bit faster. But when I saw that, I was just like, wow, okay, he can actually move. Um, and I actually thought he was Cam Davis at first um, because um, Cam is a um, large, um, a large mammal. Um, matter of fact, he was so big, I, I, I immediately went to Twitter and I have to joke with people and tell them, you guys must realize Al- Albany could pro- could probably be a pretty tough place to grow up in. Um, I just like Memphis or or even where I grew up in Tallahassee is pretty tough. We live. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Like you're not scaring anybody from going anywhere when you live in Jacksonville, Florida. Just do the research on Jacksonville. But I know this, and I'll take the risk. If my sons can come back out looking like Cam Davis, they spend it every summer with um with the Davises. Like because I just want them to do whatever they did with Cam. Do that to my do that with my sons because that kid is that that is a body ready for college. Um, people talk about SEC backs. That's an SEC back. Like that's what he looks like. We are, we are thoroughly blessed to be able to have him here. But I want to again, you know, Chris, and I hate to do this because I don't want to ever overhype my stuff. But it's really good pro day content. But I got an interview with Yak, and it is the only thing I've ever heard on that coaching staff that's better than this was Mike saying, "I can't help the star, star that you come in as, but I can help you become the star um, at the next level." And I thought that was great. But this is what Yak said. I can't, I don't know how many carries they're going to have, but they do have permission to run the ball as far as they want to every time they get the ball. Because I asked him, how do you manage, you know, the carries? He's like, you know, and and Yak, I I wanted to say it like Yak with my, my, my fake new, my fake Louisiana, New Orleans accent. But, um, but Yak, you know, has an incredible room. Again, Roy Dell is good. And even he says that everybody forgets about Toa because he's been here for so long. And, you know, he is dynamic. Um, Honestly, I think one of the ways we'll counteract sometimes with the tight end room, maybe not being where we want to, or even splitting the tight end out, you know, so going 21 personnel, but having um, Murlock be more like a slot receiver Mm -hmm. um, or even lined up somewhere else. Again, we would go um, two backs, you know, you have Toa at a um, wing back while you have a Roy Dell or a Cam or Singleton or whoever as your big as your as your regular back, and you go into a variation of what that USC offense was um, in the early 2000s. So you got that going for you, but you know you brought up guys like Sam Singleton. I, I can understand why. You know, I still don't. I think CJ Campbell would have been fine in this offense. Yeah. Um, but shout out to him doing what he's doing at FAU. I can see why other guys probably didn't feel as strong and maybe wanted some concessions or some guarantees um, in the terms of whether it be NIL, whether it be guaranteed carries or whatever. Because, I mean, Sam Singleton is coming for that spot because you saw him get carries late in the season last year. And he's, a, again, a very explosive bat um, that's gotten thicker. Um, I'm trying to think um, what else I can really say. Oh, shout out, shout out to St. All um, High School. Uh, in New Orleans, the purple. I, I can't, I, I'm I'm joking with about the purple punks is what my boy TG used to call them. Um, okay. Tom and Gardner, who actually I'm gonna have him on a Dope Boys podcast um, coming up soon. But he, um, I'm missing somebody. I feel like did I not talk about everybody? Talk Roy Dell. Oh, Lucas, Jalen oh. Lucas. Yeah. Um, he, he calls him a little dynamite, but he gives us something in the return game. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a, I say it's, it's hard. How do you say something's better than when you had the, arguably the number one running back in the draft? Like just leave. How do you, like, how do you say that 
without like sounding like a homer, but like, damn, you know. Yeah. Oh, Kaziah. Yeah, I did miss Kaziah. Kaziah, you know. That's how good the mother cats is. Mm -hmm. You gotta get on your Honda, man. You gotta get on your, you gotta you gotta get, you gotta command that ball, man. You gotta go out there and you gotta eat, man. And, and this is man, this is the the beautiful part about all of this and why I'm so optimistic is that regardless of what's going on, we have never had well, never not never. We have this collection of talent is becoming a little bit more used to what the Florida State's used what we used to have. Um, you may not believe it so much on the offensive line, but when it comes to the skill positions and just the natural ability of people, like you should, like when I was at Florida State and the guys before, I used to question why am I even in this room? Like these guys are like way, what? Like my freshman year, and that's why I always tell people I don't, I don't get on people for like not for leaving. And I, I talked about Toa Philly, didn't I? I thought I did. My bad. I think Toa Philly is more of a, a – he ain't Reggie, but he could be Reggie. That would be my – that would be my – that's what I would like to see Toa Philly used as. Again, uh, Lorenzo – I guess poor man's Reggie Bush would be Lorenzo Booker. Um, kind of reminds me of a little bit of that, the ability to stretch, explode, runs with great wheel routes. I've always said this. Um, I think he is a good, a, a capable running back, and obviously we saw that in the, in the ACC championship. But honest to God's truth, if them other cats ain't working out, motion his ass to the slot and get and let's get active um, because I think he can be a – I think he's – actually, you know what? Forget all of that. It's Alvin Kamara. That's who he is. He's Alvin Kamara. And yep. – um, Again, the room is – I think when it's all said and done, Yak will be um, probably considered – is, Yak is not even now when it's all said and done. I think right now, um, especially if we got, you have um, uh, Corbin that's in the NFL still. You'll have Trey Benson going to the NFL. You have Toa Philly and Roy Dell. Like, I think when it's um, – I think we have one of the most underrated running back coaches in America. Yep. I like to break down the running backs. So everybody knows, you know, we started with the the rooms that we would be worried about the most, or that I'm worried about the most, down to the least. I don't want to put, I don't want to put words in James's head saying that he's worried about this room more than that one. That's just my list of how I would break down what room I'm worried about the most to the least. Um, and well, like I said, once we got past the offensive line room, really the offensive line room was hard to critique. But once we got past that, it's almost impossible to put these in order. Um, but we'll move to the last room as far as how I see it. I know special teams still counts, but I'm not breaking the special teams down when our kicker's returning and we have as many athletes as we do. I'm just – there's no sense in it. Um, but this is the reason why, even though I feel like the running back room is extremely special, and it is. The wide receiver room is extremely special. QB room might be the best that it's been in a long time. It's just some lack of experience um, in both the wide receiver and also the quarterback room that gives me the reason that I put those in the spot that I did. So the last spot um, is for the DBs. But let me give you all of them and let you understand why it's hard for me and probably anyone to critique the DB room. On one cornerback position, you've got Fentrell Cypress, Richard Sr. The second behind him would be uh, – Quindarius Jones, which is a sophomore. He didn't even redshirt because how much he played last year. So he's not redshirted. He's a sophomore, a true sophomore this year. Uh, behind him is Jamari Howard as a freshman. You move to the other cornerback position, you've got Azaria Thomas. He's a junior. Behind him is Jabril Rawls, redshirt freshman. So it's his second year. He just was redshirted his first year. So now he's a redshirt freshman this year. Behind him is Charles Lester III, which is a freshman, and Kai Bates is a freshman. I don't know if y'all paid any attention to those two, but we probably don't drop off much. Um, if you go to the nickel cornerbacks, you got Greedy Vance, which is a redshirt fresh, uh, senior, and or Earl Little Jr., which is a redshirt sophomore. Behind him is Kevin Knowles, which is a redshirt senior, and I really expect Edwin Joseph to possibly jump. Someone, I don't want to say who because he might not, but Edwin Joseph is who's behind the other nickel corners um, that I just named off. And then you go to the Buck safety, you've got Shaheen Brown as a redshirt junior, and you've got Ashlyn 
Uh, Barker is a redshirt sophomore. And then you move down to the second safety position. You've got Conrad Hussey, which is a true sophomore. And you've got Devontae Brown, which is a redshirt senior. K.J. Kirkland, which is a redshirt freshman. It's going to be really hard to pick that room apart. It's it's extremely talented. It's already showing that wide receivers are having a, a tough time with these guys already. Uh, the coverage is probably the best that we've seen in some time. And you're bringing in a lot of youth that's pushing the older guys to be that much better. So the, the iron sharpens iron um, quote really means a lot when we talk about this DB room. The DBs and the and the running backs are probably the two best rooms. Um, you could say 1A and 1B in, in my eyes. Um, but I gave the DB room – just a little bit of a, a head over them, um, and that's just because that's just a – this is a crap ton of talent to ignore. Not that the running back room's not. It's just the, the DBs may be what saves our defense in any lack situation, Bro. just their ability. Bro, just remember – and this is why I kind of just, you know, how can you be so chill, James? Part of the reason because I played it. Everything, all of this is hypothetical. It all looks good on paper. We're in shorts. Um, and if I don't know what the numbers are, I've never done it before. All I can tell people about is every year they brought somebody in to replace me, and, and I didn't get replaced. Every year, you don't want to go to a program that doesn't bring in the best. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think about my class, there were so many can't miss guys in my class, and some of them didn't even come. Um, you know, I'm getting older now, so I can't even I can't remember all the names, but it was a wide receiver from out of Tampa. Um, there was a defensive end slash tight end out of Ed White High School. Um, Chris Davis was supposed to be Peter Ward too, and he ended up going to the NFL. And Chris was really good. Um, didn't obviously wasn't Pete, but you know, very few people are Pete. Um, you know, I, and that's not to knock anybody. But then, you know, the class before me, the class after me, um, Xavier Lee, we had a very transparent, great um, interview convo. Um, there was never supposed – like he was supposed to be the greatest quarterback prospect to come out. And then a few years – then um, uh, Ryan Paralu came out after him. And then um, Tim Tebow came out after Ryan Paralu. I say that to say is like all of these guys, you know, people complain about stuff, but then adjustments get made. Last year, all everybody did was bitch about how we needed the safety in the portal. We didn't do enough in the safety room for the safety position. The safety room to probably be one, arguably one of our best and most consistent positions um, in the secondary. Now you got Shaheen Brown coming in to, I mean, he could come back, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go ahead and predict that this is Shaheen Brown's last year. Yeah. Um, he's going to make a lot of money. Um, he's an amazing um, DB. I remember the first time at a Jacksonville practice, Kenyatta Watson told me, that that kid right there was going to be like that kid is it right there. Um, you know, you bring Earl Little in. It's so crazy that, you know, I joke about Alabama coming back and getting all getting what was theirs, the guys that they lost. And I was like, somebody was like, well, what if they come back and get Earl Little out? That would suck. But we're so deep that I think we'll be okay. Um, you know, with AZ, Cypress, Earl Little. Uh, Shaheen Brown, Conrad Hussey. Like, that's your that that could probably be your starters right there with backups. Mm-hmm. Jacobs, if I, um, you know, the other the the other Brown is a, is a rotational guy, Greedy Vance is a rotational guy, which is crazy. Um, you know, Charles Lester, um, is it, uh, is it Rawls? Yeah, Is Rawls. That, yeah, Rawls. Um, you know, just so many, so deep, so many guys that, um, like, again, like when I'm watching these guys hand fight, um, you know, going back and forth with each other, it's um, it, it's great to see. Um, but just looking into, you know, again, I keep going back to what the guys who left told me. We expect 12 to be back here next year. And when you go back and you look at this defense where we think 
things are not good at, which is how quality we are at the top. You can legitimately have Cypress, Little, Brown, Thomas, um, Lundy, Farmer, Jackson, Jones, uh, Peyton. I mean, that's nine right there. I know nine guys. It's like that's impossible. Like they have nine guys drafted off of a defense, but just that's nine quality guys right there. That's pretty freaking, pretty freaking impressive. And that's not going to the offensive side of the ball, where you know you have Roy Dell, Toa Feely, uh, a, a few of the linemen, two or three of the linemen, as well as. Um, you know, DJU um, does what we think he can do. He'll get an opportunity to go at least get a cup of coffee or hold a clipboard. Like, you, you base – you don't base it based upon just, like, if this is Georgia or whatnot. You base upon how many NFL qu- caliber guys do we have compared to what the schedule is. And that should give you hope and optimism to be able to go into that. And that's me excluding guys who are going to perform well because they just hit another year of puberty because that's just how this thing goes. And, um, you know, it's, it's fun. Um, you know, that's why, that's, you know, Chris, remember my message to everybody was enjoy it. It was really bad. It was bad for Florida state standards. Um, um, you know, but even our bad wasn't really that bad. I mean, three and six is the worst year we've ever had in post about Bowden, um, you know, about in, on, until, but yeah. three and six, five and seven, and then I think we had a six and seven year. Um, no, we had two, five and seven, two, five and seven years. So we've had four, really three years where we didn't reach a bowl game. But most schools that are even in the top 25 consistently, um, they've had way worse stretches than what we've ever had. And, you know, that was bad. And now we're in a situation where, we have jersey names, like, you know, guys that, you know, now with NIL, like, I'll go buy my son, a, you know, we, we bought Keon Coleman um, shirts. We bought Keon Coleman jerseys. Like, I'll go buy my son a um, DJU, if DJU is the starter, go buy him that jersey. Um, you know, last year, obviously, Jordan Travis, um, who I think if he doesn't make it, they need to, like, Jordan Travis is just a, is, I might call him one of the greatest Seminoles, Seminole ambassadors to ever come around. And yep. he wasn't even a guy who got recruited here. Like, you know, but it's um, enjoy success and don't get bogged down too much with the future because you don't know how long this is going to last. Like we, but we have a collection of talent um, that we haven't had in quite some time, even with um, not since though, since the 12, 13, 14 um, teams and we were robbed of the opportunity to even feel like if this was like 13. So, yep. um, but I think next year it's like 2022, but I believe that with the ability to have 2023 results, I think we should win the ACC. I think we'll get an opportunity to play in the 12 team playoff. Um, and you know, but I can't tell you with all certainty exactly what the record would be until I see. Um, more practices, but this is definitely an ACC championship caliber team. Awesome. And that's what I was going to say to everybody. You know, if you go back and watch the episodes from last year, we were extremely excited about the newcomers. We were extremely excited about what Jordan was going to be. Um, and we thought we were going to do very well. Um, I don't know that anyone picked us to be a national champion last year. Um, I did pick us to go 12-0 and in the regular season and win um, our cha- ACC championship game. And that was back in May. So that was before the season started. This year, I put it out a couple of months early. I got Florida State ceiling, uh, 12 and 0 in the regular season, 10 and 2 in the regular season. I don't count the championship game or bowl games or so on, but I will give you the regular season predictions. And I do it for Florida State, Florida, and Miami every year. Last year, I was right on the money with all three of them. Um, this year, I think on paper, now, again, there's been only a couple of practices. But on paper, we are a far more talented team than we were even in 2023 based off of the metrics that all of these individual recruiting sites and all of that give us. Supposedly last year we only had, I think it was a 40-something percent blue chip ratio. 
this year we have a 60 some odd percent blue chip ratio. So you in talent wise, you have jumped 20 some odd percent. Um, I think that Florida state has the talent. What I will give the 23 team is they were far more experienced. They had a lot more experience. Not going to say they weren't talented because they obviously were. When you got 12 people that were invited to the draft, you had a very talented team. Uh, but at the same time, we know what redshirt freshmen can do. It's not always, but Jameis Winston was a redshirt freshman. Took us to a national championship and won it. Um, you, you've you had Darby was great as a redshirt freshman. We've had guys come through that were absolute dogs when it came to, you know, first coming in or a year in. Um, I think this is going to be one of those years. I think you're, you're going to have a very hard time keeping this young talent off of the field, even though you're so talented ahead of them. You're going to have running back after running back after running back. DBs are going to make plays after play after play. Azaria is probably going to make up for that play that should have been an interception. They end up calling some BS call as far as rough, uh, roughing the passer. Rough the passer. That was one of the best plays. I don't care if it's NFL, college, or what it is. That's, that's an NFL-type play. He got both feet in and made that catch. It was very difficult. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of good plays from Fentrell Cypress. I think he's even became much better in the offseason than what he even was – and I don't know why people knocked him because he may have been one of our most productive corners in the game at, and, or in the season. So I'm very impressed with the DB room. I think this might be one of the most talented DB rooms that we've had in a decade. I, and I'm saying that not trying to knock no other rooms, but I'm saying since then uh, that they're more talented than this team, this team, and this team. Uh, just to me – I, I mean, Darby and them was great. Uh, Derwin James was – but, see, he was kind of left alone after – Derwin was kind of by himself. And then you, you brought in, you know, uh, Samuels Jr., Stanford – I, I don't want to say his name. Yeah, Stanford Samuels. But he was kind of by himself. There wasn't too many people around him. We had great DBs, but I'm talking about as an overall room of guys. And I think that this DB room is – one of the best that we've seen in quite some time. And I think that this team can go as far as they want to, as long as they can mesh together quickly. And I think they will. I think that the quarterbacks will get relationships with the wide receivers, the quarterbacks and the, or the offensive linemen will make the holes for the running backs. I think the wide receivers will be decent blocking on the outside, especially Hakeem Williams. Um, we're going to be able to move the ball on offense. And I think defensively, as long as we stay as fresh as possible, our DBs will take care of the rest because that's going to be the strength of our defense, in my opinion. I think the, that the DBs are going to create turnovers, whether it be forced fumbles, interceptions, block passes, whatever you want to call it. I think the DB room gives you the best chance. We're not going to have the defensive line play, I think, that we had last year. Um, it's, it's hard to replace Braden Fisk. Uh, I mean, Pat Payton's coming back, which is great. But for them to be on the field at the same time, you, you got, you know, Jared Verse. It just – there were so many pleathers. And then you, you throw in a linebacker, uh, the linebacker play, if it wasn't – I mean, we got to be honest with ourselves. If it wasn't for Kalen DeLoach, would we have beat Clemson this year, past year? Kalen DeLoach made one of the best plays of the season, possibly in the past five seasons. That was, a, that was just a phenomenal play. Um, Shaheen Brown's made some phenomenal plays throughout his career. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he blocked the extra point uh, versus LSU the first year we played him mm -hmm. so that we went in that game. He's back again, and that's great. I'm with James. I think this is his last year we've seen, and I think he has a big year. Conrad Hussey, we got to see a little bit of what he was last year. I think he's going to be phenomenal this year. That's why I can't – I don't feel bad about making the DV room the top room. I really don't. I think that it's – Talent-wise, has got to be the most talented room that we got. Um, but maybe maybe another room wants to prove me wrong. But y'all make sure that y'all get over to Den Media right here on YouTube. He's got plenty of pro day stuff. He's got – I'm talking about video after video, interviews. He's got plenty of things that went on at pro day at FSU 
that he's got up on the channel. He also did uh, Big Games BS this morning around 9. It was a good episode. Uh, make sure that you get over there and watch it as well. Uh, make sure that you go subscribe to the channel. He's 540 away from uh, getting to 6000 where he'll be giving away $500. Um, and then there's two other uh, lucky people that will also receive money or maybe the same person. Uh, but a member will receive um, how much? Um, $100 and then however many likes that show gets. And then so, however many likes. So, so we got 150 people watching. We got 150 likes. Then somebody's getting 150. Somebody's getting 100. The linebacker from Auburn, I don't know how this missed a lot of people because I put it yeah. out as soon as yeah. it happened. He went to NC State. Uh, but I kind of figured that was going to happen because what Florida State was asking him to do was not his strong suit. I think he could have become that. But that's not – like he was more of a DJ Lundy before DJ Lundy now. He was a good run stopper. He was a good gap filler. But coverage is not his – it's not what he does. Um, and NC State just needs him to be a run side. That's what they need from him. Come off the edge almost. He's almost a hybrid, just not a good coverage guy uh, based off of his film that I saw. Um, so I kind of figured NC State is where he would go based off of – they were asking much less of him um, than Florida State. We were trying to change his game a bit. I don't think NC State was trying to change anything. They just wanted to plug and play. Um, and that fit him. And I'm, I'm proud of him for getting there. Great, all those good things. Um, I don't think we're going to have a linebacker problem, really. Um, just we'll see what happens. Uh, if you haven't liked this video, like it, share it on social media, subscribe to the channel, check out the memberships on both mine uh, here at Spirit Addicts and James is over at Den Media Group. It it helps so many different ways. If you become a member over here, half of whatever I make off of memberships or donations or whatever goes to Florida State Athletes over at James's. It goes to athletes before they ever get to Florida State. It goes to some very young uh, athletes that get the first time they ever see a Florida State game or to get a backpack uh, or to get a turkey on Thanksgiving or to get gifts uh, for getting good grades. So MFTK is a huge portion of what all of us, I think, I think we all should agree that MFTK is a huge uh, help to the communities in Florida because he doesn't just do it in Jacksonville. He doesn't just do it in Tallahassee. He doesn't just do it in Tampa. He doesn't just do it in Florida alone. He's did some stuff up in Atlanta, Georgia, or around Georgia's area. So there's a lot that get, that gets done with MFTK. So whatever you're giving to this channel or to James's channel, um, it's for a great cause. Um, luckily, we don't have to depend 100% on the money that comes to these channels to live um, or to keep the lights on. So we're trying to take advantage of those those opportunities to make communities better, um, make athletes' positions easier uh, to come to Florida State. Because the more money that we have at Florida State, the more that you're not going to have a problem keeping uh, great athletes around this program. So it's the it's the market that we're in. Uh, but yes, Chris, we do need a biscuit in our tight end room. Um, definitely agree with that, James. I appreciate you coming on. Um, there will be no. Um, rant tonight because this was supposed to be a very uh, strategic episode as far as breaking all the rooms down. I think we did a great job as far as that goes. Um, and we will see y'all Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Y'all check out James. You got Wednesday, right? Yeah, I'll be on Wednesday. I think I'll have a – well, yeah, I got to talk with Big Foe. We'll have a we'll have a Dope Boys this week, hopefully. Okay. And then um, – Thursday, I might be on late with you because I'm supposed to be going to – supposed to be taking trade to a practice, which I think there's a scrimmage. So okay. we'll be checking that out. So um, we'll have maybe some updates or whatever when it comes All to All right. Well, I might be doing a special episode tomorrow depending on if this news mm -hmm. goes through or not. If, this, if what I just got texted goes through, then I'll be doing a special episode tomorrow. Or well, shoot me, let me know what it is. I will. I got to send you that phone number too that we talked about before. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Everybody, y'all have a great rest of your night. Um, I hope you have a, a wonderful Tuesday and rest of your week. Have a no-tastic. Just be a no. Don't, don't worry about nothing else. Y'all have a good one. 
and go Knowles.